Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapse version of these two lovely cats in soft pastel. If you'd like to work along with me in real time, I will be releasing this entire paint along demo on my Patreon channel and I'll add links to that in the description below. But also if you enjoy this here then please do subscribe here on YouTube. Also check out all my other playlists as I have lots of free content to help you out with soft pastel. So in my full length tutorial, I start right at the beginning showing my patrons how I work with more difficult photograph and how I can enhance the photo reference before I start to paint. I took this photograph just quickly on my camera phone one day and I've been meaning to paint it ever since, but it's not 100% clear the photo reference. It's not the best photo reference to work from, but it was certainly good enough to see enough detail to create a nice portrait of these two. So I started off with the little kitten. He's tucked well in behind his mum, so it makes sense to start with him as he's slightly more in the background. Using mostly my Unison Soft Pastels, and I'm working on the light grey velour paper. This is about 12 by 10 inches big, so it's not a huge piece either. But I chose to work on the velour paper because I feel that I can be a little bit looser, a little bit more painterly on this paper. And when I'm faced with a photo reference that doesn't have absolutely every hair of detail visible, then sometimes velour is the right choice of paper. I also love to use pastel matte paper but it's more for when I've got a photo reference that shows absolutely every little hair. So you'll notice that I do pick up some pastel pencils here and there. I need the fine points of those for small details around the eyes, sometimes to do a little bit of refining throughout the fur, and especially around the edges. But the majority of the work is done with the big sticks, as I really love the vibrance and the strength of the colour that you get from the sticks. I also love the fact that you don't get perhaps the finest mark from the sticks like you do from a sharp pencil, as sometimes I'm not really trying to paint absolutely every hair, I'm more trying to capture the overall texture and sometimes I'm actually painting little clumps of hairs rather than each individual hair. And that's certainly the case in this piece where, especially on the kitten, you couldn't really see individual hairs. He's just a little ball of fluff, really. So if you're struggling to get finer details using your big pastel sticks, then be sure to check out another video I have here on YouTube. All about that, showing you how to get the best out of your sticks, how to make all sorts of different marks that you're going to need to make when painting, well, anything but animals especially. You will notice that my sticks come in a range of sizes here. They all started off as big full sticks with their papers on, but over time they wear down into different shapes and sizes. I break them when I need sharper edges. And in this piece I was literally making use of some really tiny little shards of white pastel, especially when adding the reflection on the eyes. So the, the mum was a very unusual colour scheme to create. I don't think I've painted an animal with this combination of colours before. But like always, I'm just starting by laying down the dark colours. So all the darker hairs and all the roots that I can see in there that are dark, putting them on the paper first. And then really using my lighter colours to shape it and to really add the direction of the fur. You can do a huge amount with just the sticks on their own. 
But then I did come back in with some pastel pencil, which you'll see soon, and strengthen some of those dark marks. Just refining the fur even more. But what really drew me to this photo reference was the gorgeous expression and those lovely big blue eyes on both mum and kitten. I've seen quite a few cats now with blue eyes, especially in the shelter where I volunteer and where these two came from. But it is a little bit of a rarity unless you're talking about a Siamese cat, for example. I think they mostly have blue eyes. So again, I will release this all in real time. I like doing the time lapses too though, as it gives you a little overview of the entire process. And especially for those who don't have six or seven hours to sit and watch the entire thing. This series will come to about seven hours in length, showing you absolutely every mark from beginning to end. Perfect if you want to learn more about painting cats or just more about soft pastel in general. But I know that I find cats that bit more tricky than other animals to paint. Maybe it's because I've painted less of them. Maybe I've just painted more dogs and I'm more used to capturing their expression. But I always find cats tricky. I think there's there are so many differences in their eyes from one cat to another. And it's quite hard to capture their expression. So that's something that I really worked hard on with the eyes of these two cats. And I talk about that lots more in the real-time tutorial. Hopefully I can give some tips on how to capture the eyes best. So working on down the front of Mum's body here, and you can see that I've made the shadow on the little kitten nice and dark so that the front of the adult cat really sits out. So you've got to think about your light and shade, most importantly, as it's going to affect all of your colour choices. And the lighting in the photo reference for this was reasonably flat. There was no really nice direct sunlight hitting the two. So that was another thing that I've talked about a lot throughout the tutorial, how to bring out more colour and more interest than you can see in the photo reference, how to enhance what you're seeing. As I think that's really part of the job of a portrait artist, especially a pet portrait artist who works from photo reference. I'm always aiming to bring out more than I can see in the photo reference to try and enhance it. And with a little bit of knowledge on colour theory, you can do that. Just having some knowledge of colour theory really helps you to enhance what you're seeing, to inject more colour into the piece. So again, if you're struggling with colour, do have a look on the rest of my YouTube playlists here. I've got an entire playlist devoted to colour theory. And there are quite a few videos in there now to help you on that topic. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this come together, in its speedy version anyway. 
I will add links underneath this video if you'd like to go and check out the real-time tutorial. And as well as that, I've got a huge back catalogue on my Patreon channel of all sorts of different tutorials, not just animals, people, landscapes. There's a little bit of everything on there, hopefully. And you can browse everything that I have available now on my website library, emmacolbertart.com. So nearing the end on this, just some final touches, filling in the blue of the blanket in the foreground. And the final thing to go on will be the white whiskers. So thanks again for watching this here. Please do subscribe here on YouTube. Show my channel some support. And until next time, happy passling.